According to the Electronic Journal of Research in Educational Psychology, written by Sandra Ruiz, extensive use of electronic media by students can lead to poor academic performance, um, which includes failing, trouble reading, and falling behind. Do you agree? Mm -hmm. How many of you have relatives or not even at an elementary school right now? Do they have phones? Knowledge, skills, and care, knowledge, skills, and character development. The primary school education lays out the foundation for kids' learning and development. So, in later years, if they don't get these these fundamentals, what do you think is going to happen to to them in their education? Do you have any suggestions or any anything? What do you think will happen to them in their fundamental? when they want to go to school in high school? There has to be a, a time of when to use it. Exactly. So if students are focused on electronics during class, they will not fully grasp the educa educational foundation in their, in their lives. And which, which, is a, which is a problem, honestly, right? Because if they're not getting these fundamental education or in any of these fundamental elements of their education, they're not going to succeed in the future. So now that I talked about the negative effects of electronics for elementary school students, I will discuss why we are seeing them in elementary school. In elementary school, we are seeing more and more young kids with, el with electronics in school every day, and it's becoming a problem. Recently. This is like last week maybe, I was talking to one of my fourth grade students and she told me how she got in trouble. She asked the principal talk to her for being on Instagram during the class. <laughs> oh my yeah. God. And when I asked her, why are we on Instagram? And she told me, because I was bored. And I asked her, okay, so what did you learn in that day? And she's like, I don't remember. So that impacted me a lot because I thought like, wow, how could she, how could she be on Instagram, she's in fourth grade, and how could she have a phone and an iPad, iPod in class? And I asked her, so what did your parents tell you? And her parents told her that she should have been busy in class, but they told her it was okay for her to take her cell phone and her iPod to school in case she also was in recess or something. So, oh there you go. So according to an article, um, 
Um, by Lisa Nelson, written in August of 2013. Parents buy their kids cell phone and electronics, according to the parents, okay, to help keep, help keep the kids organized, um, keeps them safe, and it allows them to di digitally teach themselves and the most common Wi-Fi losing battle. What, which one really stood out to me was digitally teaching themselves. They're, they're kids, they're young kids. How are they going to digitally teach themselves? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, that's what out to me. So I thought I had to talk about this topic. Um, kids cannot teach themselves their own fundamental, the fundamentals of education. How is that possible? And I want to ask you all this because you should be asking me your little ones or the, the little siblings or cousins or any of the people you know that this is not right. Because I know a lot of you had your hands up that they have cell phones and iPods in their elementary school. So now I will give you some solutions to the to the growing problem. There are many solutions that are already being implemented by elementary schools in order to stop this from happening. So, for example, um, one of the, the reasons why parents bought their their kids um, cell phones was to keep them safe, right? Um, it is a parent's responsibility or a guardian's responsibility to fill out the emergency card before um, it gets too late into the term. Do we all remember emergency cards? It's the parent's responsibility. They're obviously young, they're not gonna remember, so as a parent, as a guardian, or even as a sibling, you should let your, your parents know that they need to have their emergency card filled completely out. This will allow them to get in contact with the school if something does happen to their child, so there is no need for the safety. Um, excuse and also kids get walked out to the beginning of, to the front of the gate and they don't leave the security guards are leaving not even until the last person gets picked up also there is programs like LA Stress which is the one that I'm involved in and EYS where they can stay with somebody with an adult until their parents picks them up parents can allow kids obviously to use their electronics at home maybe after they're done with their homework but it is really up to the parents or the guardians so I think that's a couple of solutions and there's already solutions that exist so there's really no reason why these kids should have electronics in school so let us finish learning about how electronic usage in elementary school setting has negatively affected the education so i'll help you get a better understanding why they shouldn't be there first i talked about the negative effects second i talked about why these kids even have them in elementary school and last i talked about some of the solutions and some of the solutions that already we can set the example and ensure our little loved ones get the education they deserve. So in conclusion, they, these kids, in order for them not to fail in, in elementary school, need motivation, um, dedication, and discipline. Thank you.